Looking to give back this holiday season? Donate to the Army Historical Foundation. For 40 years, the Army Historical Foundation has ensured our nation never forgets the sacrifices of those who serve. As the Army's nonprofit partner, the Foundation constructed the National Museum of the United States Army. The Foundation's work also extends beyond the museum's walls, restoring artifacts, touring historic battlefields, and remembering all we owe to America's Army veterans. Donate today at ArmyHistory.org. For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger, Because we have professional-grade supplies for every industry, even hard-to-find products. And we have same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Now listen to Father Knows Best, transcribed starring Robert Young as Father. Welcome to Springfield and another half-hour visit with the folks in the white frame house on Maple Street. Sit back and enjoy life with the Andersons, Kathy, Bud, Betty, Margaret, and Jim, as the head of this typical American household again sets out to prove that Father Knows Best. This is New Year's Eve in Springfield, just as it is everywhere else. But there's something special about this New Year's Eve at the White Frame House on Maple Street. For the first time in years, things have worked out so that Jim and Margaret can go out to a New Year's party instead of spending it at home with the children. And right now, party preparations are nearing completion. Like this. Margaret, I need some help with these cufflinks. They put so much starch in the cuffs, I can hardly bend them around my wrist. Mommy! They keep snapping back at me. Yes, Kathy, but take some white shoe polish and clean them. I'll just get them dirty again. Clean them anyway. Now then, Jim, give me your cufflinks. Uh You know, I can hardly believe we're actually going out this New Year's. (laughs) It is hard to believe. How many years is it now that we've been trying to get to the Stevens New Year's party? Mm, You'd think they would have stopped inviting us by now. (laughs) Well, tonight we'll make up for all the years we've missed. Of course, it makes you feel a little older to realize that your children are finally old enough to go somewhere on New Year's Eve. <laughs> but it's kind of a good feeling, too. Gives you a sense of freedom. Mommy! <laughs> yes, Kathy? Is it all right if I wear blue shoes tonight? It would be fine, but you don't have any blue shoes. I do now. <laughs> I'll be there in a minute, Kathy. Where did you say she was going tonight? Oh, just over to Patty Davis's house. Patty's grandmother's going to be there to stay with the girls. Mother! Hey, where's the new black bow tie I bought to wear tonight? Mother! I put it right here on the bed. Mother, I snagged these stockings. Do you have an extra pair of real sheer dark ones? Look in my top drawer. I think there's one pair in there. Those are the ones I snagged. <laughs> Well, did you look in There's the... There's none there either. Well, maybe you can... That won't work either. <laughs> the only solution I can see, Mother, is for us to exchange stockings. I should wear the snagged ones? <laughs> well, after all, Mother, it doesn't matter so much how you're... Uh, well, I mean, when a person gets to be... married people who looks at anyone's legs. <laughs> well, there's your father and Mr. Davis and Mr. Phillips and Mr. Liggett and Mr. Stevens and Mr. Stewart. Betty, have you seen an elderly black bow tie anywhere? <laughs> father, I've got problems of my own. Oh, I'm sorry. Um... Betty, I may be caught up in the Stanley Steamer crowd, but I plan to wear these stockings tonight, even though... Oh, wait, I think I might have another pair in my room. Mom! I can't imagine where that tie went to. 
Mom, where's that checkered flannel shirt of mine? Bud, you can't wear that to a party. It hasn't got any holes in it. <laughs> I know that. And it's clean. Bud, I want you to dress up. Why? All there's going to be there is just some fellas and some girls. Nobody but people, huh? <laughs> well, if you want to call girls people. <laughs> well, even though it is limited to people, I want you to dress up. Wear your white shirt. It won't look very good with blue jeans. <laughs> Who said you were going to wear blue jeans? Wear your good blue suit. I thought that was for Sunday school. Well, you can wear it tonight, too. After all, this is New Year's Eve. And it's your first New Year's Eve party. Well, okay. But a blue suit doesn't look so hot with tennis shoes. <laughs> <laughs> tennis shoes? Well, gosh, we're going to play games tonight, and I don't want to slip. Look, bud. A fellow needs to be sure-footed. That's fine, but... Needs suction grip soles on the turns. <laughs> <laughs> Look, bud, tonight... You uh -huh. want me to lose the games? Of course not, but... Bud, wear your good shoes and stop badgering your mother. Well, okay. If you want your boy to be a wallflower... Oh, wait a minute, wallflower. Do you know where my new... No. I didn't think so. Now, what do you suppose happened to that tie? Margaret, are you sure you didn't pick it up? I haven't even seen the tie, Jim. It was right there on the bed. Mommy! Now, what could have happened to it? Mommy, how do I look in my new black hair ribbon? Does that answer your question, Jim? <laughs> how does it look, huh? Well, it looks fine, kitten, except that happens to be my necktie. Oh, dear. Jim, will you go down and get the phone? My nail polish is still wet. I'll and go down, Mother. It's probably Ralph worrying about if I'm going to be ready on time. He always thinks he has to wait for me, and I don't know where he ever got that idea because he never has to wait for me. I never make him wait. I can't remember one single time that I ever made him wait. <laughs> well, don't stand there talking. Go down and answer the phone. I'll let him wait. Oh. <laughs> He'll do him good. Ah, oh, the feminine female mind is a wondrous thing indeed. What does that mean, Daddy? I wish I knew, kitten. <laughs> and please give me back my tie. Oh, flibberty gibbets. <laughs> Come on, Kathy, we'll go find you another ribbon. We'd better figure out what to do about your shoes, too. Oh, I got them fixed. I made two-tone shoes out of them. Oh, fine. Blue and red. <laughs> red? Where did the red come from? Well, see, when I was trying to scrape off the blue polish with a knife... A knife? I cut my finger, and so I got out the mercuricomb... Uh, say and, no more. And the red and the blue looked so pretty, I just finished them up that way. <laughs> I'll bet they look great now. Yeah, they do. But we'll have to get a new bottle of mercuricomb. That stuff doesn't spread as far as shoe polish. <laughs> Mother? How about your brown Oxfords? Are they good enough to wear? Mother, that was Mrs. Davis. She said Patty's in bed. In bed? She ate up the mistletoe and got sick. <laughs> oh, my. So Kathy can't go over there tonight. Oh, gee willikers. Uh-oh. -uh. Well, I know what that means. Here, Kathy, you can have the tie. I won't be wearing it tonight. Well, now, wait a minute, Jim. All's not lost. And here I thought that for once we had New Year's Eve all organized. Well, it'll still work out. I'll call a sitter to stay with Kathy. Oh, heck, I don't want a sitter. I want to go with you and Daddy. <laughs> Look, Angel, by the time we're ready to leave, it'll be your bedtime. You said I could stay up until 9.30 tonight. Well, you can. I'll go down and call Mrs. Treeley. She's usually available. I don't want Mrs. Treeley. Mrs. Treeley always wants to read me a bedtime story to put me to sleep. Well, you like bedtime stories all right, don't you? Sure, but she always falls asleep instead of me. <laughs> I see. I have to keep waking her up so many times that I lose interest in the story. Well, I think this is something we'd better look into. We're not paying her to come over here and sleep. Don't pay her anything at all. Maybe she'll stay away. Well, I doubt if she'll be able to make it tonight. We'll soon find out. Here comes your mother. 
How'd you make out, Margaret? No luck with Mrs. Treeley. Goody. She's already taken for tonight, and so is Mrs. Freeman. Goody. But Mrs. Brophy said she was pretty sure she could find somebody to send over. Who? I don't know. Well, whoever it is, I don't like her. But you haven't even seen her yet, Kathy. Well, gosh, if I don't like her without even seeing her, think how much worse it will be when I do see her. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll eat some mistletoe and go over and be sick in bed with Patty. <laughs> Mom, uh, I forgot to tell you that I'm supposed to take a box lunch to this party. A box lunch? Well, for goodness sakes, Bud, why didn't you tell me before? I forgot. <sighs> Well, it's hardly time to fix one now. Oh, I won't need much. Just enough for me and whatever girl gets me. <laughs> well, let me think. Why don't you just throw a couple of things together? Like, say, fry a couple of chickens, some mashed potatoes, <laughs> corn on the cob, string beans, apple pie. Bud, I'm not going to fry any chickens for you tonight. I can tell you that right now. Why don't you go down in the kitchen and see what you can find for some sandwiches? There's some peanut butter and jelly. Ugh. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? What do you think I am, a vegetarian? <laughs> I want meat. Come on, bud. I'll go down with you and see what we can find. I'm a little hungry myself. Okay. Wait for me. I'm hungry, too. Oh, bud, do you have to make so much noise when you go downstairs? Oh, I told you I should have worn my tennis shoes tonight. <laughs> Oh, sure. They have super suction cup cushion soles. I'll bet that's your sitter, Kathy. Go let her in. I don't like her. Well, let her in anyway. You might be surprised and like her. No, I won't. Well, don't keep her out there waiting. Okay. Tell her your mother will be down in a few minutes. Come on, bud. Let's see what we can find in the kitchen. Kathy, open the front door. Hello. Daddy says for you to come in. Well, thanks. Hi there. How are you? Huh? Hey, who are you? Well, I'm Freddie Zollers. I'll bet you're Kathy. Is that right? Uh-huh. But how did you know? My aunt told me. My aunt is Mrs. Brophy. Brophy? You mean you're my sitter? You hit it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does seem kind of funny, doesn't it? But, see, I'm making my own way in college, and I pick up a buck wherever I can. You're really going to stay here and play with me? That's the deal. Uh, look what I brought along for us to play with. You uh, any good at ping pong? Gee, golly boy! Come on, we'll set it up on your dining room table. Have you got a good big one? Yeah, it's right through this way. Okay. Gee, you sure are pretty. <laughs> Kathy, I, I think we're going to get along great. Here's the table. Now what do we do? Well, you take one end of this net and go around the other side of the table. Yeah, that's the idea. Kathy! Who's that? That's just my old sister. <laughs> Don't let her know we're in here. Kathy, did you hide my gloves? Is that your sister out in the hall? Yeah, that's her. Come on, let's play. Wow. She's no fun. She's no good at games. <laughs> Kathy, where are you? Oh, here you are. Kathy, did you... Well. Well. You go away, Betty. This is my sitter. <laughs> sitter? Yeah. I'm working my way through college. <laughs> oh, did Mrs. Brophy send you? Yeah, she's my aunt. Oh, my name's Freddie Zollers. What's yours? It's Betty. Betty. Gee, that's my favorite name. <laughs> um, want to have a game of ping pong? Now, wait a minute. You're going to be here all evening? Yeah, that's the deal. Hmm. Come on, Freddie, let's play. Betty, go answer the phone. <laughs> Somebody else will get it. Now, uh, here's a good way to hold the paddle, Betty. Uh, some players hold it this way, but I prefer to... to... Betty! Oh, be oh, there you are. Telephone. All right, brother dear. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> nice to have met you, Freddy. Yeah. Nice to have met you. Come on, Freddy. Let's play. Hey, who's he? Shh. 
Who's Freddy? That's Kathy's sitter. Sitter? Howlin' Cat's dead. Get a load of that sitter. <laughs> Who's on the phone, Ralph? Yes. Did you say the sitter's a he? Take a peek in the dining room. Hello? Uh -huh. Oh, yes, Ralph. Well, no, I'm not ready yet. Ralph, I'm afraid I'm not going to make it. You see him, Dad? Yeah. Well, Ralph, I have a simply, utterly crushing headache, and I just uh, don't think I can go to the party tonight. Now, uh, well, wait a minute, Betty. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Ralph, but I just wouldn't be any fun at all tonight. Now, listen here, Betty. Well, I'm sorry, too, Ralph, but this came up awfully sudden. It certainly did. <laughs> well, thank you, Ralph, I will. Goodbye. Betty, I'm ashamed of you. But why, Father? You wouldn't want me to go out with a crushing headache, would you? No, no, of course not. In fact, now that I think of it, I'm glad you did that. You are? Certainly. Now that you're going to be home, we won't need the sitter. What? I won't tell you to get home. No, Father, wait. Two of Father Knows Best in just a moment. Tomorrow, over the entire coast-to-coast -coast facilities of the NBC radio network, you're invited to tune to the Pageant of the Roses as NBC takes you to Pasadena, California for the Rose Parade. You'll want to hear every minute of it on this station of the NBC radio network. Later in the day, NBC will again switch to Pasadena for a play-by-play -play description of the world-famed Rose Bowl football game. The Spartans of Michigan State College, co-champions of the Big Ten, versus the Bruins of UCLA, Pacific Coast champions. Check your local newspaper for the times of the broadcasts on this same NBC station. Well, what started out to be the first well-organized New Year's Eve in the history of the Anderson family has now become a mixed-up shambles. When Kathy's plans fell through, they had to get a sitter for her. And when the sitter turned out to be a handsome young man, Betty called off her date with Ralph. And now Jim is upsetting Betty's little scheme by letting the sitter go home. Like this. You see, uh, something just came up, mister. Uh, what did you say your name was? Uh, Freddie Zoller, sir. Yes. Well, Freddie, it looks now as though our oldest daughter won't be going out tonight. She won't? Hey, wait! Uh, it seems that she has a crushing headache. Oh, gosh, that's too bad. She's got to go out, Daddy. Well, she's called off her date already. No glue pots. And as long as uh, <laughs> she's going to be here, Freddy, I guess we won't need a sitter after all. However, we'll pay you anyway, as long as you were good enough to come all the way over. But Father, I think I've changed my mind. Oh? My head seems to feel a little better now. I might call Ralph and go after all, maybe. Good! Good! Well, are you sure you're going to go? I think so. At any rate, we'll need someone to stay with Kathy. I see. Well, Freddie, I guess you'd better stick around until the princess makes up her mind what she's going to do. That is, if you don't mind. Oh, I don't mind at all. Not at all, sir. Come on, Freddie. Let's get going here. It's my turn to bat. It's your turn to serve, Kathy. Okay, my turn to serve the bat. Come on! <laughs> Dad! I'm coming, bud. My, I'll bet that's a fascinating game to play. Yeah. Uh, here, you want to try it? Oh, oh, no, you've got a headache. Uh, you'd better sit down. Would you like to have me get you a drink of water? Would you? Oh, slush. <laughs> I'll be right back. Now, listen, Betty. He's my... Excuse kid. me, Mr. Anderson. Uh, could I please get a glass of water? Oh, sure. Help yourself. There's some glasses in that cupboard right next to the sink. Oh, thanks. I don't think you've met my son. This is uh, Bud, Freddy Zoller. Hi. Hi. Say, you wouldn't have an aspirin tablet handy, would you? Has Kathy given you a headache already? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's for Betty. Well, I'll tell you, Freddy, I doubt if an aspirin would have much effect on the kind of headache Betty has. Just to uh, give her the water. Yes, sir, I will. I'll take good care of her, sir. What's wrong with him? I don't know. He snapped his snood. <laughs> well, he'll get it back as soon as Betty leaves. Now then, what was your problem? Oh, uh, no problem. I just can't find hardly anything for my box lunch. 
Well, let's see. What have you got in here so far? Apples, that's good. Dill pickles. Do you need a whole jar of them? Pickles are hard to carry loose. I see. Wieners. Well, these aren't cooked, bud. They're not bad, Raw. I might be able to put them on the radiator for a while to sort of warm them up. Wait a minute. Why do you need two packages of wieners? Well, she might want some, too. I see. Well, what else have we got here? Donuts, cookies, pretzels, box of crackers, bottle of ketchup. I just put in one. I thought we could share that. <laughs> can of minced ham, can of hominy. But you've got to cook hominy. Oh, is that what that is? I thought it said honey. <laughs> Oh, me. I thought honey would go good with the pretzels. Yes, delicious. <laughs> can of corned beef, can of Vienna sausages, can of salmon. But this was supposed to be a box lunch, not a canned lunch. I know, but where can you get a box of salmon? <laughs> What's this in here for? A head of cabbage. Well, I thought maybe I could trade that off for something if I get hungry. <laughs> Yeah, that you should worry about. Jim, I'm ready. Let's go. Just a minute, Margaret. So what do you think I could take, Dad? Oh, a side of beef would be nice. <laughs> Hurry up, Jim. We'd better go. I just called the Stevens and told them we're late, but we're on our way. Well, Margaret, I don't think we should leave just yet. Uh, a situation has come up with a sitter who happens to be... I know all about it. Kathy just told me. Come on. But, Margaret, I was just wondering if we ought to leave them unchaperoned. It doesn't seem quite proper... He is a stranger. No, he's not. He's Mrs. Brophy's nephew. He's a wonderful boy. Dad, where could I get a side of beef this time of the night? <laughs> I don't know, bud. Come on, Jim. We're terribly late now. Look at the clock. Oh, my gosh. How did it get that late? Well, we've all just been fooling around. We've got to go. Yeah, okay. That, uh, Freddy is awfully good looking. Oh, stop being a father and let's go. This is our New Year's night out, remember? Yeah, okay. I know good and well Betty never intended to call Ralph back and go out with him. She's waited long enough, so he's sure to have made other plans by now. Oh, now, Jim, stop it. Daddy, will you come in and play ping pong with me? I thought you were playing with Freddy. No, they're in the living room sitting on the Davenport. By George, I knew it. <laughs> you knew what? Well, I mean, uh... Maybe I'd better go in there and just sort of, well, you know, uh, uh, check. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jim, you remind me of my father. Oh, dear, that's probably the Stevens wondering what happened to us. Bud, tell them we're on our way. Come on, Jim. Wait, it might be an important call. Oh, dear. Hello? Oh, hi, Joe. It's just Joe. Come on. Wait, I forgot to get a handkerchief, I think. Jim, come back. Hey, I'm glad you called, Joe. What are you putting in your box lunch? What? You've eaten already? Now, look what time it is. Well, how was it? Did the girls draw names and all that? Who got me? Claude Mesner? <laughs> Uneven number, huh? <laughs> I'll show you how to bat a serve, Mommy. Some other time. What are you doing now? Going home. No, I haven't got my box lunch ready yet. Jim, hurry up. Well, okay, Joe. See you tomorrow. Bye. Anybody want some pretzels and pickles? <laughs> Bud, come on. Play me a game, will you, huh? In just a minute. I want to eat a couple of wieners first. Mother, aren't you and Father ever going to your party? I'm trying my best to get him out of here. He's upstairs getting a handkerchief right now. No, he isn't. He's in the dining room playing ping pong with Freddy. Ping pong? I know what he's doing, too. He's protecting his poor little innocent daughter. Oh, fine. Oh, boy, I'd like to get in on that game myself. Come on, Kathy, maybe we can get up some doubles. Hot dog! Wait, children, don't start anything. Oh, dear. Mother, why does father think he has to protect me? Because he's a father, that's why. Here, Betty, put this on so you won't soil your good dress. But Why? Don't you know what we have to do now? I don't think I do. Well, you will, after you have a family of your own. Now, help me with this stuff here. I think we can put it over on the table there. Oh, I get you. I think this is a wonderful plan, Mother. 
It's one I've been using for years. Oh, we better hurry, too. It's just about time. You're right. Maybe you'd better go break up the game and call them out here. Okay. Miss it, Kathy. Swing, no. Kathy. That's it. Good girl. Oh. Now, that makes a deuce. Wait a minute. That was our point. She missed the table. No, she didn't. Did you, Kathy? No, sir. Oh, let them have it. We'll still beat them. Oh, listen to him. Wait a minute. Hold it. Huh? Hmm? I have a brief announcement. Mother wants you all to file into the kitchen. What for? We've just got the game started. Come on, everyone. Yes, ma'am. Well, come on, kids. Remember now, it's my serve. Right in here. That's it. Well, what's all this? It's time for refreshments. Help yourselves. Pickles, pretzels, donuts, <laughs> corned beef, salmon. Hey, that's my box lunch. <laughs> and one can of hominy. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and look at the clock, everyone. Huh? Well, I'll be. Happy, Happy New Year! Happy New Year! New Year. All the ways and be forgot and never brought to mind. Sure, all the ways and be forgot and days of old lang syne. <laughs> Margaret, let me be the first to kiss our wonderful hostess. Um. Hey, that's an idea. Oh, Freddie. <laughs> oh, boy, this is what I like. Corned beef. <laughs> By George, Margaret, I believe this is the best time we've had since the first year we missed the Stevens party. Happy, Happy New, New Year, year everybody. everybody. The Andersons will be back in a moment. New Year's Eve. Tomorrow, another great year dawns. But tonight's a time for celebration of the wonderful days which have passed in 53. And right now is a time for a word of caution. In your celebrating tonight, please follow this rule of good sense. If you drink, don't drive. Driving and drinking don't mix. So remember the number one rule of the professional truck driver. Driving is a full-time job. The professional driver's good safety record is based upon the fact that when he drives, he's in full command of his senses. Remember that alcohol and gasoline don't mix, and that the life you save may be your own. Well, the Andersons all finally went to a New Year's party, but it turned out to be the one they always attend, their own. The younger celebrants are all fast asleep in their beds now. Only Jim and Margaret are still up as they tidy up a few things downstairs. Like this. You know, Margaret, when you come right down to it, there's no better place to celebrate New Year's Eve than right in your own home with your own family. <laughs> well, I must admit, we had a wonderful time. <gasps> oh, my goodness. What's the matter? We forgot to call the Stevens to tell them we weren't coming. Well, I think they figured that out for themselves by now. <laughs> But we should call, Jim. I feel awful. Well, you're right, but it's pretty late now. They'll still be going strong. Call them and explain. Mm, what'll I say? Just say, well, you'll think of something. I know they're wondering why we didn't even call. Please do it, Jim. Well, okay. I'll, uh, just tell them we got stuck here at home again, and, uh, there was no way to... Hello? Who is this? Oh, Harvey? Well, Happy New Year to you, too, Harvey. Uh, this is Jim. Uh, Jim Anderson. No, we're at home. Yeah. Huh? Well, we had to, Harvey. I, I just called back to thank you again. Uh, it was a wonderful party. Yeah, so long, Harvey. <laughs> Jim, Jim, what were you talking about? How do you like that? He asked me why we left the party so early. They never even missed us. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Father Knows Best is an NBC Radio Network production in cooperation with Cavalier Enterprises. In our cast were Gene Vanderpile as Margaret, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, Helen Strom, and Gil Stratton, Jr. Father Knows Best, based on characters created by Ed James, written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers, directed by Arthur Jacobson, and transcribed in Hollywood. This is Bill Foreman speaking. <laughs> Tonight, here's
feature the all-star parade of bands on the NBC radio network. The United States Border Patrol has exciting and rewarding career opportunities with the nation's largest law enforcement organization. Earn great pay with outstanding federal benefits and up to $20,000 in recruitment incentives. Learn more online at cbp.gov slash careers slash usbp. Heading downtown to a museum, sporting event, show, or for holiday shopping? Plan ahead for the Red Line service changes starting Monday, December 18th through Saturday, December 30th. Free shuttle buses will replace trains between DuPont Circle and Gallery Place. For more detailed information and travel alternatives, call 202-637-7000 or visit wmata.com, W-M-A-T-A.com. 